Hello and welcome to this video in which we will answer a crucial question. Can Americans disable the F-35 fighter jets they have sold to their allies in Europe, Canada and all over the world? This question stems from the evolving strategic context under Donald Trump's presidency, who is clearly in a power struggle between the United States and their former allies, or even who has imperialist territorial ambitions on certain client countries of the United States like Canada or Denmark through his desire to annex Greenland, First, the F-35 is an ultra-connected plane. When we say that, we often think of the plane's communication with its flying environment. But in fact, all its operations are managed on the ground by a software called ALICE, which is referred to as the computer backbone of the F-35. This system allows for the maintenance of the plane through big data analysis to meet logistical needs, for example to order spare parts, but also to configure the device before takeoff, to conduct debriefings, or even to prepare the missions themselves. As a former mission planner on Rafale at Flotty Doos F and Andivisio on a Rafale Marine, I can discuss this topic with you. And basically, we have a kind of big server, a big computer, in which we are going to configure everything that happens in a flight. We provide a large USB key containing the plane's waypoints during its mission. The avionics configuration includes screen locations, sensor configurations and bomb drop zones. All while staying safe, even with the configuration of the trajectory of bombs and missiles up to their impact. For instance, multiple bombs at 2SM can be dropped seconds apart to penetrate a bunker consecutively. Additionally, a precise shadow will prevent debris from falling on one side, reducing the risk of collateral damage. But so, does that mean that a plane on which we could not provide this key with all the elements of the flight? Obviously, these operational performances will be greatly reduced. Getting back to Alice, the F-35 management system, every float that has the plane has an Alice station and this station is connected to the network via the internet. And after each flight, the mission data must therefore be transferred to the servers that end up at the Lockheed Martin facilities at the Forsworth base in Texas. As seen in the diagram, and it is the only base in the world that is capable of receiving and exploiting all this data. And the report from the American Court of Auditors is very clear the plane could continue to fly for 30 days if unfortunately it could not be connected to Alice. For instance, if there are attacks on the main server or power outages, the Court of Auditors aims to be reassuring with their statement. But it still means that if a customer could no longer be connected because they disagreed with the United States, the fact of no longer being able to connect would reduce the operational performance of the plane. And that's for eternity. Since there are no more updates, there is no more system that will work correctly. So, already we have two problems. First, we have a feedback of information that is not decided by the user of the plane and that is decided by the United States. We are vulnerable to losing connectivity, for instance during war or if the United States ends its alliances. Additionally, we can include the system's cybersecurity issues deemed critical in the United States. Alice was categorized as a level 1 failure for the plane in 2016. And this problem of sovereignty of defense data that goes back to the United States without the consent of users was judged so critical that at least two F-35 customer countries threatened to abandon the plane. Which led the American Defense Department to request the development of an Alice Sovereign Data Management in 2018 to give more visibility to customers. On what really goes back to the United States, but in the end, only Israel had the right to have a completely isolated and sovereign system, while countries like Norway or Italy had to spend millions of dollars trying to prevent this involuntary data transfer to the United States. Incidentally, Alice users have reported nearly 4,700 new software failures in just the years 2018 and 2019. This led the United States to abandon Alice and start afresh with the development of the software. So, theoretically, Odin is a kind of Alice, but without the flaws of a computer system whose development started in 2002, the design must consider the sovereignty needs of the aircraft's buyers, except that we discover in 2021 that Odin will also be hosted on a cloud of the American Defense Department on American territories, on infrastructures that are managed by major private players like Amazon and Microsoft, Lockheed Martin always excludes the concept of sovereignty of export customer data. The question now is to what extent the United States of America can prevent the customer from using their planes? Well, officially, obviously, no. As Canadian newspapers remind us, the United States has denied that there is what is called a kill switch on the F-35. Just as they initially denied that Alice was sending mission data back to the United States. 
Clearly, we are not protected against new deception from the United States. However, the Department of Defense has confirmed they directly manage the software and are the only ones capable of providing the necessary updates for the plane to function properly. For example, the patches needed to fix the device's hundreds of remaining bugs. Russia is also the sole producer and provider of key electronic warfare libraries. In other words, if tomorrow the Russians make a new radar and the United States does not want the European F-35s to have the ability to detect this radar, classify it and understand its operation. The parameters for detecting the radar and classifying it as a threat cannot be put into the plane without the approval of the United States, so we are constrained. Our intelligence service, which would capture information, could not even put it in the device without the help of the Americans. And conversely, we are subject to their goodwill. So we could still hope that uh, with the passage from Odin to Alice, this American control that reduced the capabilities of the plane, after 30 days, if it wasn't connected, it would disappear. When questioned about this issue, Swiss authorities provide reassurance. But, on the other hand, the Belgian Defence Press Service has on the contrary confirmed that the F-35 can be deployed entirely autonomously. Although it is recommended not to extend this situation beyond a few weeks. In other words, there will always be restrictions on the plane's use. If we don't want to, or the Americans can't let us, unfortunately, connect to their server. Even worse, Israel had revealed that the F-35, which the United States of America planned to sell to the Emirates, could be made less stealthy if necessary. It's written in black and white in this article. In other words, the stealthy F-35 of the United States of America's allies would no longer be stealthy if the United States no longer wanted it to be. It's precisely because of the issue of data sovereignty. They don't know what is being sent back to the United States. Also due to United States control over the F-35's capabilities. Even once they have purchased the device, that the United Arab Emirates have renounced the mega contract of $20 billion to buy 50 planes. And they turn to the Rafale, obviously. Especially since in 2020, Reuters also revealed that Washington demanded that the exported F-35s could not match the performance of those operated by the United States, which confirms the fear expressed as early as 2006 in Australia with the stealth performance of the F-35's communication system, which was degraded from the very low observable level for the American F-35 to only low observable for the Australians. So, you see, once again, we can't talk about a kill switch. That is, they can't disable the planes remotely, but we have at least F-35 that are inferior to these two United States. We have very likely data leaks and potentially a capacity to reduce the efficiency of the plane if the United States wishes so. And here, we're only talking about the F-35, which obviously attracts all the spotlights. But we can also ask the question whether there is direct American control over other systems they sell. And obviously, the answer is a thousand times yes. The problem is that all the countries allied with the United States given use American infrastructures that impose their standards outside of NATO or within NATO. For instance, the global positioning system system and military data communications such as Link 16 and Data 22 can be deactivated at will or simply equipment that uses encryption with American keys. And so you have the Dutch researcher Ingo Peepers, who gives some examples of weapons that rely on the goodwill of the Americans, with, for example, the encryption of the target acquisition system of the Abraham tank, the MQ-9 Reaper drones, which can only be controlled via American satellites, the ships using the Aegis combat system, which relies on a radar configuration that is carried out by the Americans themselves. The Patriot Air Defense System's radar configuration is controlled from the United States, meaning it can be degraded or rendered inoperable. The American-supplied high-mobility artillery rocket system ground-to-ground -ground missiles deployed in Ukraine are a well-known example of this. And the latest version of the F-16 fighter, which is called the F-16V, whose electronic warfare capabilities rely on supervision from Washington. So we see that there are a lot of problems piling up. However, we also recognize that countries purchasing these aircraft face interoperability challenges. And indeed, this was a fear that analysts had been expressing for quite some time, but which was confirmed by an exercise conducted in December. In 2024, Lockheed Martin reported significant news, a major first for Great Britain. And for the first time, an F-35 was able to transmit classified data to a non-American command center. In other words, the exported F-35s cannot fully share their tactical situation with their own command. A network-centric warfare with a combat cloud, this is only possible with the United States and under their direction, especially since the F-35 uses a communication protocol that is not recognized by NATO. 
This means that a country with several types of aircraft could not fully make its devices work together. This was the case with the Eurofighter and F-35 in Great Britain, Italy and Germany. It's the same problem in coordinating several allies. For example, Belgium with France, which has gusts, or even with Finland and Sweden, which have Gripen fighters supplied by SAB. So, let's be clear. This means that in the event of a possible confrontation between European countries without the United States of America, for example, to defend against Russia, or even to protect Greenland against the United States, countries equipped with F-35 are simply disarmed. And besides, in general, since we can't communicate without the L-16 tactical data links that the Americans know how to decipher, we are in any case unable to exchange discreetly among ourselves. This problem isn't specific to the F-35, it even affects European equipment that must communicate with each other. I'll share just one well-known anecdote out of many possible examples. It's a case that came to light in Austria and so that the Eurofighter can communicate with the other planes in its network so that it can turn on its navigation system and activate its friend-foe identifier. There were two contractors from a private American company that still cost $500,000 a year who had to be present to put an American key on the Eurofighters so they could use NATO standards. In other words, we are completely submissive and at the mercy of the United States. Even for a Eurofighter aircraft that is produced by European countries, we can't do without them. And indeed, that's why, as part of the deployment of the F-4 standard of the Rafale, there will be a way to communicate between French aircraft without using a communication system that the United States of America has the key to. The last order for 42 Rafales by the General Directorate of Armament specifically mentions the radio contact system, confirming this detail in writing. But hey, we can try to reassure ourselves by saying that the United States will never betray us. Especially since they still depend on their partners, since some of the components of the F-35 are produced abroad, as is always the case in the context of industrial compensations that are carried out after armament contracts. Although industrial returns are lower than initially planned for the F-35 on one hand, and so, we can hope that this dependence on the United States could prevent them from stabbing us in the back. Not well, no. Since Trump just asked Lockheed Martin to break industrial partnerships with the F-35 customers to repatriate the production of its components directly on American soil. Do you see it coming, the carrot? So, I summarize then. We are talking about a plane that some of the customers were forced to buy. With two very well-known examples, Norway, which was going to buy Gripen, but who underwent such strong American diplomatic pressures that they had to take F-35. And these are pieces of information that were revealed by the secret documents published by Edward Snowden. The second example is the Netherlands, where the Rafale at the F-4 standard outclassed the F-35 in the competition. The leaked results from the local Ministry of Defense show the final outcome of the competition based on the criteria set by the country. But the country had also had to give in to buy a plane that they had officially estimated to be less good in their evaluation. I won't mention the French industrialists' doubts about the competition in Switzerland, where they had already been told the Rafale was chosen, until a visit from the American president changed the game. Belgium had already selected the F-35 prior to the competition's commencement. Then we talk about a plane bought by some customers out of vassalage to the United States of America, simply thinking that buying American equipment brought automatic American protection. This isn't guaranteed today. For example, consider countries like Poland. We discuss a plane with limited performance for export customers. Additionally, there's an obligation to pay for unplanned updates. We're discussing a plane that doesn't guarantee sovereignty over data shared with the United States and potentially has a quasi-kill switch, which has led some customers to give it up. We're discussing an aircraft that consistently exceeds cost expectations, such as Switzerland's acquisition contract, which increased by 1 billion Swiss francs. Or its operating cost, which always exceeds $40,000 per flight hour, instead of the originally planned $26,000. For comparison, the Rafale costs 17,000 euros per flight hour. And the cost of the F-35 has become so high that even the American Court of Auditors believes its operating cost is unsustainable. So they imposed a reduction in the number of orders while continuing to claim for their clients. Of course not, there is no problem. The costs, it will go down as planned. Even the Americans don't believe it. We're talking about a plane that was provided by a country that today potentially represents a direct military threat for some of its own customers, starting with Canada and Denmark, 
So in short, we massively bought American weapons. We submitted to the Americans for standards for the wrong reasons. No one believed in the need for strategic autonomy, which has been advocated by France since de Gaulle. And all of Europe realizes today that France was right all along. The consequences are now infinitely more serious, as all countries have repeated this mistake for decades. And the saddest part is that Europe has, produces and supplies absolutely all the equipment and all the weapons necessary to stand up to Russia. From planes to missiles, including tanks, submarines and air defense, without any exception. So, let's be clear. Let's cancel all orders for this equipment and the F-35 while there's still time. I don't want to hear people saying it's not possible. Was that the case when Australia cancelled the order for French submarines in favor of the United States? And who are regretting it today? This led to the cancellation of contracts for Russian Sukhoi-35 to Egypt and Indonesia. That was the case for the French helicopter carriers to Russia, for the Russian Kamov helicopters to India, for the Israeli ammunition to Spain. This supplied to Turkish ships for the Indian Navy and Italy, which cancelled ammunition contracts for Saudi Arabia. And uh, obviously, that's the case for the United States, which did not hesitate to cancel the contract for Airbus refueling planes. And the last good example is the Turkish F-35s. And there, for once, they were lucky. Is the Americans who refused to sell them the F-35 when they bought the S-400s. They are the only ones who can be satisfied with the situation today, even though the S-400s, obviously. You know what I think about it? Now, go see your elected officials, put pressure on decision makers and let's all make a massive choice together. Let's cancel our dependence on the United States once and for all for our security, for our economy, for our sovereignty. In other words, there's one thing to say, it's time to wake up. It's time for Europe to behave like the power it should have always been. France, I always say French if possible, European if necessary. There's no reason for us to depend on either the United States or Russia. We can be a sovereign and autonomous power. In the meantime, I repeat, do weightlifting. I put all the sources in the video description. But there is really an urgent work to be done. An awareness at the international French level. We have ended our alliance with the United States and must now chart our own course. Alright, I'll see you very soon.